What is up, folks? So, today's video, if you can guess by the title already, I got my helmet here. It is the night, the day before we take this little rice rocket to the racetrack. So, I am super pumped. I've been to a couple autocrosses and I've also been to uh, Fontana AAA Speedway. So, I've been on that racetrack with this thing. This thing is so much fun, you guys. I don't even know if words can describe how much fun this thing is to take to the track. It is literally like a street legal go-kart. So I know it's small, but you guys have been go-karting, don't lie to me. And this is equally as much fun and it handles just about as good. So anyways, uh, this thing, I haven't touched it for a little while, but um, I wanna get it ready for tomorrow. So we're gonna be changing the oil on it. So um, I'm just gonna show you guys that and also some of the checks that we're gonna be doing to make sure that this thing's gonna be good for tomorrow. So. If you guys don't know, and I know there's a lot of new people on the channel lately, but we have Raybestus racing pads on this, and we also have uh, newer rotors too. So we have a race compound pad on all four corners. We have steel braided brake lines on this thing, and we have super grippy uh, federal tires on it. So these are a 200 treadwear, I believe it is. Uh, where does it say? Yeah. Treadwear 200s, meaning that they're a really soft compound tire. So this thing is gonna be super fun, you guys. And uh, yeah, with the downforce, I still have to put the wing on it too. So you see the wing up there, that's gotta go on it. I have that other bumper for it, but uh, we're not gonna be obviously putting that on today, but definitely we'll put the wing back on the back of this thing and uh, we'll get it all prepped. Let's get it up in the air, drop the oil, and I'll show you a few other things actually. So I got the Honda oil filter. There were some guys that were talking about, you know, Fram oil filters and how they get a bad rep. You gotta remember Fram is probably the number one brand of oil filter that most people use. So most people are putting Fram on their cars. So just by the numbers, failure is gonna be, you know, more prevalent to a Fram oil filter just since there's so many of them out there and so many vehicles running Fram. Walmart stocks Fram, AutoZone stocks Fram. So, I mean, just that's most of the filter that people are running. So, but with that being said, with certain high performance engines, any of these vehicles, whether it's this one, this one, or this one, they are all running the performance filter. This one has a Viper SRT filter on it, the spec for that engine. This one has the same thing, has an SRT filter on it. And this, as you can see, I'm using a Honda oil filter and I have a new Honda oil filter that is specific to the 9200 RPM red line in this car. Yes, it's almost a 10,000 RPM red line if you guys didn't know. So definitely gonna be putting the oil filter for that in there just because it flows so much and spins so fast. Um, definitely wanna have the right filter. So anyways, enough talking. Also, actually I'm not done talking. I got three of the brake rotors for the car, the Viper. Those are 14 inch brake rotors. We're gonna be putting four front rotors on the f all four corners of this car. It's gonna be nuts. So anyways, enough of that. Let's get this thing up and get working. Okay, so car is up in the air and you guys might be wondering why I didn't go all the way up. I need one of those things that you can actually drain the oil in and I don't really want extra stuff in the garage, but if you put the car way up and then you try and put the pan on the ground or even on this, the distance between the two, it creates this huge splash and the oil just flies everywhere. So I rather just sneak under here and just loosen it so that it doesn't have that far of a distance to go between the engine and the pan and it doesn't make a huge splash. This is the oil we're gonna be putting in. So mobile one, this is actually kind of a race weight. So it's a thicker weight for sure, right? 15W50, but this has more zinc and protection than uh, a lot of the other oils. So I've ran this for a while in all my high performance vehicles. So in the heat, if you're running in hot climates and you're beating on things, this has always been my go-to. So there's that. And then I'll show you the filter. So here's the oil filter we're gonna be running. The Honda 15400 PCX004. And this is for the Honda S2000. So this is specifically for the S2000 and it's made to withstand those high RPMs. So this is the one we're gonna be putting on as well. So like I said, I use genuine stuff where it matters, where it counts, but daily driver stuff doesn't make a difference to be honest with you. You're not, I'm not really beating on my Jetta. Well, maybe I am, but not enough to matter. So anyways, let's drop the oil, get those new stuff on there. 
so the oil's pretty much done draining, but before I do remove anything, I'm gonna come up top here and I'm gonna spin that oil filter loose. You can get it from the bottom, but I got this little step stool, why not, right? So I'm gonna loosen this and we'll let the oil drain out the bottom. And then once everything is done draining, then we can just put the car down and get everything else from the top. So I did have to loosen it with a set of these. These oil filters, just so you guys know, or if you didn't know, um, you want to tighten them on quite a bit because these are really known or prone to coming loose and where it position is, is the oil flies all over your exhaust manifold and actually starts a fire. So um, yeah, definitely wanna make sure you have this guy snugged up on this thing. So we'll drop the rest of this oil. I'm gonna go straight into our pan, which is nice. So we'll let this drain out and we'll get it from the bottom. All right, so we're back underneath and I do not want to grab this right now. I got my Fitbit on and I have a feeling this is going to puke all over me. Let me trade hands and uh, we'll get that off. Ooh, that's pretty good. I didn't get it all over my arm, which was nice. Not that I haven't done it before them complaining, but it didn't seem like a good idea to get it all over my watch at the time. So, so oil filters off. Let's take this out of here. We're going to put the new oil filter on, just spin it on, and we're going to get it hand tight as much as possible, maybe a tiny bit more. And then uh, we'll also put it in our drain bolt. And we'll reinstall our new oil filter. A little easier to get to from up here. Well, we're definitely going to make sure we crank this on something decent. So there we go. She is nice and tight. Let's put our drain bolt in on the bottom. And just for that extra peace of mind, we're going to just make sure she's extra snug on there with one of these oil filter wrenches. Like I said, because you just don't want these come off. You can read endless threads of them coming off. So there we go. That's definitely not going to come off. He's super tight on there, down to the bottom. All right, let's get that drain bolt in here. Always put your drain bolt in finger tight. Some guys like to just put the wrench right on it and start tightening, but it's always good to bottom out the threads finger tight, and then you can get the last little snug on it with your ratchet. This is an aluminum oil pan, so definitely don't go crazy on this. Probably get a official torque spec if you want it, but that's pretty much it. Just snug it up. As soon as it stops, don't go gorilla mode on it. That's it. So we're done down here. I'm gonna wipe this up real quick. Let's get out of here. Down she goes. First you gotta go up though. So you get off the safety latches, boom. One more, boom. Now we can put it back down. So I already checked most of the stuff on this, just so you guys know. The only thing I really have to check is I might just uh, just pop the wheel off, double check that uh, everything's tight in there. But I already checked all the control arm bolts, all that kind of stuff underneath. And um, I saved you guys that boring part, but let's get some oil in it. And uh, she's almost ready. There really isn't a whole lot to do to this thing. It's uh, pretty much ready to go. Definitely have to have a good aim for this, guys, but I swear I mess it up every time. Ooh, let's see if we can get her in. Not bad, a little bit of spillage. So we'll check our oil level and then we'll move on to the next thing. All right, oil's good. I checked the level, double, triple checked it, we're good. Another thing I wanted to double check is rad fluid, good. And then the overflow still has some on the bottom. So we are all good, you guys. So under the hood should be good. You also have to make sure everything is secure. So the battery is tight, strapped down, everything else is you know pretty stock. So not gonna be any issues there. So we'll close the hood and we do have to put the wing on, which I'm gonna do here at the end. And uh, I'll just double check that our lug nuts are all tight. Also, I have to fit a couple things. You guys will be really surprised that I can fit in the trunk of this thing. We're gonna bring the easy up a chair and a bunch of stuff in the trunk of this thing, which it's pretty uh, remarkable what you can squeeze in the back of this. So also this might have to go. It's been a while. I think it's been a long time coming and um, it's kind of hard to see out of there. So it might not be a bad idea to get, uh, get rid of it at this point. All right guys, so I just put wood underneath it because putting it on this was a pain. So I had to jack it up to get it on here. So I'm gonna put wood underneath the wheels so that I can get these arms from out from underneath this time hopefully so hopefully let's see Ooh, just barely but that is a lot easier we got them out we got them out boys so i think we might end up taking that off so that we can see even though chris super cool dude and all that i just uh we already got our you know a bunch of stickers on there 
but I think that has to go just so we can see and that cops don't give us a hard time either. So um, yeah, we might be taking that off next, but let's get the arms out of there. I'm also double checking that all my wheels are tight. So I don't have any reason for them not to be tight, but just double checking. The last thing we need is wheels flying off. So I'll double check it and uh, I'll move on to the next thing. Okay, so that sticker is no longer there. I know some of you guys asked about that on another video that uh, you guys were trying to watch, you know, some of the footage in the car and that sticker was blocking a lot of views. So that is gone. So we should have a little bit clearer in-car footage. Right now I'm just making sure all the tires are aired up. So with the colder weather, they all seem to be at about 25. So I'm airing them back up to 32 and we'll just, uh, well, just the tire pressure once we get there and get on the track and everything's at hot temperature and also gonna bring an air pump with me along with my tire pressure gauge so we'll adjust them throughout the day but at least uh, we got like a two and a half hour drive there so uh, we'll make sure they're at 32 to start off so just checking that and then we'll see what else we need to do if you guys want a little fun fact you may have seen me working from this tool set before i went and i bought these online these holders but everything that you guys have seen me do for the most part for the last couple years has been for a better part just from this craftsman toolkits i've kind of added to it over the years and just with kind of harbor freight stuff more than anything i have an actual you know good set which i'm actually gonna you know whip out here but um since i'm going to the track i want to put my tools back into my mastercraft tool set so i can bring a tool set at the track just in case anything happens at least i have tools there so i've been doing everything you guys have been seeing from a craftsman toolkit so hopefully that inspires some of you guys that you guys can do this stuff too um yeah we're just using some basic stuff next up i gotta get the big wang out of the rafters and put it on the car Ooh, look at this thing all carbon fiber she's light so i'll mount it onto our mounts So we got the wing all mounted and sturdy. Now comes the fun part of putting all this stuff in the back of the car, which shouldn't be a big issue, honestly. And uh, we're gonna take our tool set. Also gonna take a spare rotor. So uh, a spare rotor or two, just cause these brakes are known to actually crack the rotor. That's how much heat and stress these pads, these race pads can put on the rotor. So um, we'll make bring some spare rotors just in case. And um, that's pretty much it. We'll load it all up. Okay, so I am just going to run to the gas station and just fill up the gas cans and then I'm gonna figure out how to put all of that stuff in the back of the car. So it should be pretty interesting. Let me just get gas real quick, be right back. All right, so we're at Arco. We just got five gallons, five gallons, and now we're filling the car for the way there, but we're gonna fill it up before we get into the entrance. And it looks like about 70 bucks. So that's why you can't go wrong with this thing. It's super cheap to do. All right guys, so we did 91, $3.57, it was $68, and we are full, so we're ready to go. All right, we're back, so let me configure everything. We have to get the tent in there, our oil, our chair, we got our two fuel cans, and I still have to get that toolkit in here. So let me do it, I'll show you what the result is. Okay, so after some messing around, I came up with it. So everything is in here, we got two five gallon jugs, we have a bunch of wrenches that are in here. I have an air pump. I have my easy up canopy. I have a chair. I have extra oil. I have the jack, which is buried right there, if you can see it. Harbor Freight Low Pro Jack is there. Here's the pull for it. We have our toolkit in there. Only thing I had to do was the spare tire usually sits there. I had to put the spare tire here and my helmet there. So this is like the ultimate track car. I don't know how you can fit this much stuff in here. Like, look, so she closes. So that's it, you guys. <laughs> Anyways, that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a little bit different, but um, we're gonna go racing tomorrow. It's gonna be fun. I'm super excited, but I gotta get it to bed early so that we can get there on time. I have to leave at like 4.30 in the morning to get there around, I don't know, seven or something. So it's like two and a half hour drive, 4.30. Puts me pretty much at arriving at 7 a.m., get set up, get through tech inspection, uh, riders meeting, driver's meeting. I'm used to racing motocross and snowcross where they call it a rider meeting. Anyways, I'm tired. I'm probably rambling. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. See you on the next one.